come join me as I paint this cute little bumblebee. I'll have available to you my line drawing and my inspiration photo. With my line drawing, it turned out a little bit dark around the edges, so I'm just erasing so when I go to paint, those pencil marks won't show through. One of the things I like to do before I start painting is I get the colors that I'm going to use. This is an Azo Yellow that I just put there in a quinacridone gold. And I just stick them in this little cute container and those will kind of be off to the side. Then I'm really aware of what colors I'm using and I can easily access them if I need more. I just added in a sap green and my violet, my moon glow, my Payne's gray, and I'll save my white gouache for later. Now here I'm just pre-wetting the area that I'm going to work on first with these little buds. So I want this first layer to be soft. I'm going to want my colors to blend. So pre-wetting is pretty crucial to kind of making that first layer soft. Mixing a little sap green, a little of my Azo yellow. It's going to make kind of a brighter, lighter green. We're going to be doing many layers as we go so I'm not too worried about what this first layer you know how deep the color is because we're going to be adding more color as we go I'm also not worried that my the color green that I'm using isn't matching my inspiration photo the inspiration photo is just for me just kind of a guideline for me I'm not copying it I'm actually going to be adding uh, some things that are a little different than the inspiration photo to give it a little more interest. Here I'm just taking my violet. It's a thalo purple. Just very watery, just kind of letting it blend down a little bit. I'm going to blend with that green. And making it a little deeper at the at the top. I'm just going to take a little more of that sap green, kind of deepen the base a little bit, give those buds a little more dimension. As our first layers dry, they become a little more pale, so it's okay to get the vibrancy going here, but we'll be adding more later. And adding more depth and interest and detail as we go. So we want this first layer to dry. I'm a little impatient so I just use my hair dryer to softly dry that. Now we're going to bring in our little flowers that are just starting to bloom. On the inspiration photo it doesn't really show the flowers blooming but I just thought I wanted to make it a little different from the photo. So I'm just adding little buds, little flowers. One of the interesting things about my violet, my phthalo purple, uh, the brand is Grumbacher and I actually bought this tube, oh goodness, over 30 years ago um, in college and this tube is still good. So I didn't have to go buy myself a purple. I can just use the purple I already had. So you don't necessarily have to go out and buy new colors. You can just use the colors that you already have. I realized here that I forgot part of my bud. But I'm going to use a little bit of that sap green. I'm just going to add in a little bit of detail just that first layer of detail. It's kind of keeping it soft. I'm just wanting a hint of detail. 
at this time. Finishing up the last of my flowers. I'm taking a little bit of my moon glow. There's kind of a flower here that's bloomed a little bit more. Just adding in a little hint of color there. My moon glow kind of has a purplish color to it, so it just makes a very soft shadow. I'm going to pre wet almost all of my bumblebee. So when we add in our yellow, we're going to want it to spread softly. And I'm going to be adding yellow to the whole bumblebee because I want that yellow to kind of pop through a little bit when we add the darker uh, Payne's Gray so that it will give that bumblebee more dimension when it dries. But we're going to start off in the areas that are yellow. And I'm putting the color in there pretty bright. It's pretty vibrant. We already know it's going to dry softer. Just adding in a little water to have that yellow just softly go into the areas that are going to be dark. Now I'm taking my quinacridone gold adding it in for a little dimension, a little shadow. This color works really well um, with bumblebees. It's almost like a gold yellow. I'm just taking a very watery version of that yellow and I'm just kind of adding it into my buds. This is one of the ways that I used to tie in different elements of my painting is you can kind of add in just a color wash of some of those colors and kind of intermix them so that the whole picture ties together in the end. I'm just taking some clean water and I'm just wetting the areas that I'm going to be using my Payne's Gray because I want that paint just to kind of spread softly This is one of the ways that will help that yellow kind of pop through and it will help it look a little softer and fuzzier as it dries and spreads. And this is kind of part of the painting where it doesn't really look very good yet. <laughs> the bumblebee looks a little odd a little patchy but we have a lot more work to do so you just have to forge ahead and just keep adding that paint spray just kind of looking at my inspiration photo a little bit to kind of keep that shape of the bee Once that dark color goes down, there really isn't any changing it, so I'm just looking at where I want to add that. I just love watching that paint spread. is looking a little angry right now because we haven't done the eye yet. Taking 
taking a little bit of my moon glow and a little water and I'm just going to drop in some of that moon glow on top of our Payne's Gray. Our Payne's Gray is still wet and that moon glow is just going to kind of spread in there. You can't really see it right now what a difference that's going to make but after all those colors dry a little bit of that moon glow is going to kind of pop through it really does help give the bee more interest and more dimension the moon glow is kind of a purpley gray and it's a really nice color when you you need a dark color but you also need to see some detail through it just adding in a little paints gray to give it a little more dimension sorry i use that word too much i can't really think of another word to use what I'm doing now is I'm just adding some clean water kind of around my edges, kind of realizing my Payne's Gray is a little too dark for my liking. So I'm just dropping in some water and that's just going to kind of reactivate the paint that's already down and it's going to kind of spread out. By doing this, it's going to help us in our next layer of detail. But you really don't have to do this part if you're worried about messing up your painting then don't worry about doing what I just did. But as you see it dry here you can see that yellow kind of pop through again. Now we're working on the eye. We're keeping this really simple. There really isn't much detail in this eye since it's so dark. You almost don't see it. I'm coming in with my liner brush. This is the smallest brush I own, and I'm just kind of adding in a little bit of the detail of the wing. I'm just going over the lines that I've already drawn there. I'm going to do a very watery moon glow for the part of the wings that are a little bit farther away, you don't see as much detail in the Payne's Gray for the front where you see a little more detail. At the point of the painting here, you could totally say, you know what, I love it, I'm done, but that's not me. Um, I want to add more detail. It's just what I enjoy doing. I'm going to be adding in with my little liner brush there. I'm just going to be adding in a little bit of that fuzzy detail. Just taking that Payne's Gray. When you look at these bees up close, they're kind of fuzzy. They almost have fur. Just adding a little bit of that detail on the legs. As we go, we're going to be adding a lot more of this. To me, this is where painting starts coming to life a little bit more. So I'm just kind of adding my detail. Now I'm bringing in my white gouache. I'm going to be adding in some highlights or some of that light fuzzy parts come into the dark areas. I'm just slowly building my detail. This is probably the part of the painting where 
it would have been good for me to stand up, walk away, go get a drink of water, and then come back and work on the detail. I kind of get lost in the detail. But I'm just kind of continuing to adding some little highlights. probably spend the next 10 minutes the last 10 minutes of my painting just continuing to add the highlights and the detail this is where I'm kind of trying to build that dimension to me the bee was looking a little bit flat and these highlights just kind of help areas pop out and give it more dimension bottom part of the bee is white but because we don't have a background on this painting we need to add in a little bit of of the moon glow we already have a little bit of our yellow there and we'll add a little bit of white later just so that part of the bumblebee shows up in our painting in another little bit of soft shadow. As you can see, bringing in a little bit of that sap green just kind of helped bring that flower out a little bit more, brought up the vibrancy a little bit. Bumblebee wings kind of reflect the colors that are around it, so I kind of mixed a lighter purple, a lavender color, and just kind of placing it a little bit in the wings there. Gives the wings a little more interest. Bringing a little bit of that reflective purple into the eye. As I'm looking at my bee, I decided I wanted the edges to be a little bit softer a little fuzzier so I'm just bringing in some water just softening those edges and this is also the point of the painting where you could say love it totally done and walk away but I enjoy adding in a little pen work into my paintings it's kind of the illustrative part of my brain that I just like bringing in just a smidgen more detail I'm using my 005 micron pen. It does just tiny thin little lines you almost don't even notice. And I'm just putting it in just a few little areas, adding in a little more fuzz, but not too much, just a tad. Kind of brings a little more crispness to our bee and flowers. And here I thought I was done, but I forgot his little antennae, so just putting in the very last details of my painting. Now you can see all those little layers we did, all the details that we put in, really do matter. They show up, giving our bumblebee lots of character, lots of interest, a lot of detail. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that you're willing to give it a try. Make it your own, have fun, and I really hope you learned something new. Stay tuned for more tutorials.